Okay, how's everybody doing? So I just want to talk a little bit about this Atlas HO scale 73 foot center partition car or center beam car I, I'm used to calling them. Um, and I just want to show you a few clips on how I weathered it. Um, first of all, this this model uh, is really, a, a you know, I mean, it's probably the best center beam there is for sure. Um, they're around the $40 mark, I think. Uh, give or take, you know, they're a little pricey again, but you know, they are really You know the 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 gold standard for center beam cars I think that are out there unless there's an exact rail or Rivet counter scale trains like I don't know I'm gonna have some exact rail. I might have missed the boat on some of them, but for uh, a center partition car I think these these are pretty much it um, they are really, really nice. They're they're nicely detailed on the bottom. Uh, they have the you know the air tank and hoses and the brake lines. Uh, I changed the wheel sets out. I put exact uh, rail wheels on, the more scale type wheels, the 36 inch wheels, um, which is what the prototype has, and uh, KD couplers number 58s. Now to weather something like this, there isn't a lot of pallet per se like you know like a box car or a tank car or auto rack or whatever so there isn't a whole lot you can do but uh what i want to do is just show you a quick clip on how i do these cars the same way i did this uh, center beam cn version back here this one here is uh coe rail i thought it was going to be a yellow car that's but when i ordered it and got it it was white so well sort of a beige color but Anyway, so I'll just show you how I weathered these because there's not much to them really. And I'll show you how I get the deck like that. Um, it's just with a bunch of Tamiya paints uh, sprayed on and then just basically power washed off with an air uh, airbrush and isopropyl alcohol uh, at a high pressure rate. And just, just blown away, really. You just keep blowing it away until you like it. And when it dries, it goes really flat and leaves all this sort of interesting stain work along here and so on you know and then i think i added a little bit of rust with uh you know vallejo just, just, just water just put on lots of water like the wet on wet and uh you know they turn out pretty good but that's all there is to there's not much to them really you know and then if you put a lumber load on them everything disappears so okay so i'll just show you that all right okay how's everybody doing so this is uh, maybe another little segment a weathering segment um, now that the weather's nice and I can sit outside in my uh, outdoor studio, <laughs> which I love, by the way. I've always loved painting outside. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this pressure washer weathering technique. Uh, it's very similar to the um, painting the tank car with no remorse. Um, earlier on, chronologically on the channel, if you look back, you'll see there's quite a lot of views on it. It's one of the pressure washer techniques I use but in this case I want to demonstrate it on these um, center beam flats because there's not a lot of canvas on these things you know uh, other than the deck which will be a different application uh, or treatment uh, not in this particular segment but I'll show you how I do that but I want to lay on a base coat of like rail brown like umber actually uh, just this color here it's just you know um, Just show you the color here. See, that's the color. It's just the rail brown, and uh, it's just to me a black and to me a flat brown. Whatever color you want, 50/50, roughly suit to taste. You know, nothing. It doesn't have to be, you know, of a particular shade. Just as long as you got that kind of rail brown look to it. You know, similar to this right here, right? Um. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate it on this. This is sort of a very, very light gray car. So it'll probably show better. So what I'm going to do is I've, I've taken the wheels out. Uh, these couplers are going to be changed out. So I can't stand these couplers on these Atlas cars anyway. So, but I just leave them installed right now. I pull the wheels though and just tape off the inside of the journals on the trucks. Because I don't want to get paint inside of those. Because you know how when you're rolling a car, pulling a car... You know, they kind of hesitate and stuff. Well, that's the friction usually that you get from painting. Not always, but 
it can cause that, you know, where the car lurches. And uh, when you're running on a fine scale level in a small area, you don't want that kind of thing going on. So I just cover them up. So when I paint them, you know, they're not going to get full of paint. So, uh, yeah, so basically I'm just going to paint the bottom of this car rail brown. And uh, I'm not going to worry too much about uh, where the paint goes here. Because what I'm going to do is afterwards is I'm going to hit it with straight isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to crank up the pressure on the uh, compressor and then just wash a lot of it away and let it run where it wants. I got a uh, set. I ordered up some tangent wheels, the sort of the semi-scale ones, the really narrow treads. I managed to pick a few of those up. And uh, they're going to look really nice on these cars. Plus, I'll uh, probably put them on the tank cars as well. So that's what I'll do. I'll just get this covered up for you then, and then I'll show you what I do next, okay? Okay, so here's the pressure washer part. Pure 99% isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to crank the pressure up on the compressor here to really high, I want it, 60, oh we got 80, yeah, 80 PSI, okay I'm going to start with the top here. This is a really, really cool way to do this, like a, as a base starter for weathering, especially with cars like this one. It's not a large canvas. You see there, you can just reveal whatever you want. If you got a nice compressor, a little contractor, like I pointed out, this is how you turn your. Uh, airbrush into a nice little pressure washer. This is all to me a paint so it has a really nice flat look and it'll blend and really nice for you. Probably don't need as much. I can go down to take it down to 60 or 70 PSI. Oh, that's pretty good. Though. Just you know adjust your 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 PSI on your compressor and then uh, just see what you like, right? This is why I talked earlier about isopropyl being cheap, right? So you can blow it away. See there? See the little spots left behind and stuff, little anomalies. So essentially what you're doing is you're, you're just painting in reverse. <laughs> So basically this paint will be removable for for days on end like this. Um, it's nice to get on it, you know, right after you, you paint it. But you can see the effects here that it's causing. See that? Isn't that neat? You can work away light, like different, uh, like you can do it lighter. That's the idea, right? See what I mean? See what you can do?
try and do that with a paintbrush. It's not going to look like that. I mean, it might if you put lots and lots of extra work into it. But anyway, this is a good basis for. I'll, I'll strip it down a lot more, but this will be a good basis for uh, further uh, layer later on with some oils and so on. Okay, so just to recap, so rail brown Tamiya overspray, right? This is just black and brown, 50-50, give or take. Then I got my airbrush full of 99% isopropyl alcohol, and I have the compressor set at 70 PSI. This is the advantage of having a little uh, two horsepower contractor compressor for your airbrush with a tank on it. Now you can get them, I know in Canada you can get them for about $2.99 or even less actually. Uh, probably a couple of hundred dollars and if you take care of it you'll never have to buy another one again because you're not putting hard time on it, right? An airbrush is not gonna, you know, and you're not dragging it around construction sites. Maybe you already have one but it, it really pays to get one so you can do this. Watch. All we're doing is removing it as much as we want, as little as we want. And what it does is it leaves little, you know, corrosion marks and such a microscopic detail that is really practically impossible to do with a brush. I mean, you can with certain techniques, but this method works so well. You can see down the the risers. Um, it just you know it just looks great. It's all done with just an overspray of rail brown, and you just remove it, pressure washer style, with your airbrush. And then you can go at it later on with water-based flocals uh, as well, and highlights and so on. Okay. Okay, so that's that for that, <laughs> as I like to say. Um, nice little car. Um, I have two of them, like I say. I think I'd like to maybe get one more. I wanted to get a yellow one and a green one just to represent uh, lumber operations, you know, which I really like because I was in the lumber industry back in the day, well, with logging and reforestation and stuff. But um, so, yeah, nice. Uh, car for your fleet if you're into the uh, center beam stuff the atlas okay thanks for tuning in and i hope you have a great day